Hey guys, welcome to another tier list. Uh, this time we're going to be ranking the bosses based on my enjoyment of them or their skill cap or floor. Um, it's purely based on how much I enjoy the bosses and obviously this is opinion. It's a tier list, so it's going to be. Um, before I get into it, I'm going to explain what a skill floor and skill cap or ceiling is. A skill floor is how difficult the content is to jump into. So like a higher skill floor is worse. It means it's harder to get into. A high skill cap is a good thing. Um, it's how skilled you can become at content. It's where that content peaks out and you can't get any better. And there's some content in this game that has an infinite skill cap in my opinion. So um, I've got at the bottom here, I've got all the raid bosses and then the raids themselves. And these uh, grayed out versions of the top bosses are just the hard mode variant. There's no good way to really show the hard mode versions. They look the exact same. So this is what I did. I just made them a little darker. Um, and they're mechanically different, so I figured I'd rate them. Not ranking the, the challenge mode variant of the bosses because they just have higher defense and health and that kind of thing. So they're the same fight. Um, they made a nice little graphic for challenge mode chambers of Zarek, but not for Tob. So I've just got a blood scythe here for that. But let's just get into it. Uh, starting with KVD, right in here. Um, the most interesting thing about KVD is running to his lair because it's in the wilderness pretty much. Um, it's just Tebow him and he dies. He uses dragon fire, he can poison you. Not much going on, drain your stats. With a bunch of alts, you can like run supplies and that kind of thing, and that's somewhat interesting, but KVD has no mechanics whatsoever. Like not much interesting going on. Um, I have a Ring of Endurance here as well. I want to rank Sep, so I'm gonna. Uh, Hallowed Sepulchre might as well be the agility boss. Um, it's very good content. It it really pushes movement in this game to its limits. Um, floor 5 is just great. Like You can learn and learn and learn and get better and better. The skill caps are really high. Um, it's somewhere in A tier. I'm just going to put it here for now. Really good content, really high skill, really good money. One of the best scaling money in the game. I really, really enjoy Sepulcher. Um, Scorpia. Yeah, that's F. <laughs> the only mechanic about Scorpia is when she's under half health, she summons two little scorpions that heal her. If you're solo, you gotta freeze them and move her away. Or if you have an ult, you can just DPS her through it. That's not interesting. I, I, there's no skill involved. It's just hit the boss. The most interesting thing about Scorpia is that she's in 50 wilderness. And now that you can't X-Log at the Axe Hut, it's pretty much just suicide there until you get the pet. Not great. Not great. Most of the Wooly bosses, I think, are going to go in F. Uh, Skatizo. Oh, easy F. <laughs> there should be a lot of bosses in F, I think. Um, Skatizo, I think, wouldn't be terrible. Uh, he uses magic in melee. Um, he hits you really hard. If you're out of his melee range, praying mage, he just can't hit you. Which is kind of boring. The main problem is those stupid crystals that spawn on the outskirts of the area. The way you kill them is with arc light, which is a melee weapon. It one-shots them. So, And it's no cooldown timer on those stupid crystals. They can just pop up whenever they feel like it. Uh, meaning, a lot of times if you get unlucky, you're just running around in a circle around the arena hitting crystals. Like, wow, that's really fun. Nah, Skatizo's a, a horrible boss, I feel like. If they reduced that cooldown on the crystals and gave it like a cap for how many could spawn at once and that kind of thing, it'd be a lot better, but st still, like, he has nothing going on. Um, I've got Zalcano in here. It's another skilling boss. Uh, Zalcano's actually pretty interesting. There's some cool stuff you can do with the movement. Um, you can be smart and move around those portals in a very specific way to avoid damage. Um, it's not quite like Sepulchre or anything like that, but it, it does have something going on. Is it B or C? Um, I'm going to leave it in B. I think Zalcano has more going on than people give it credit for. But it's not exceptional. Ah, another F tier boss. Let's go. Kraken goes right in F. The most skilled thing you can do at Kraken is 
throw a fishing explosive and then move backwards four tiles before casting the first time. Like that's about as good as it gets. It's one of those left click the boss and it dies. Um, it has typeless magic, so you're just tanking little hits from the tentacles the whole time. Uh, yeah, Kraken's horrible. Not into it. Uh, I've got Obor on here. I, I've got Obor here. Um, I'm pairing this with the other free-to-play boss, Briafita. Um, they're both an F, like, nothing going on. Um, Obor, like, can stun you sometimes, and he just hits you. You hit him and he dies. Briafita has the little spawns that come out that you have to chop with an axe. Like, none of that requires any skill. There's no thought going on. But, like, what can you expect from a free-to-play boss? It's hard to make something mechanically interesting with no mechanics to work with. Uh, Thermi's another F tier. Getting all the Fs out of the way. Um, Thermi is left-click and he dies. Um, he's like Kraken, where it's typeless damage. Um, there's some interesting stuff you can do, like walking under with a scythe or a harm staff, or freezing him out of range and then going to max range with a sang. Um, but is that really interesting? I don't feel like that requires any skill whatsoever. The most skilled thing you can do with Thermi pretty much is running an ult from a house and just spec transferring over and over, which I don't think is a good precedent. I don't like it. He dies really fast, which is fun, but nah, that doesn't pull him out of F. Okay, Zalra. Zalra actually has a lot going on. Um, and no, I'm not saying that because of the different like variations in the phases. Um, more so the like understanding how many hits you can get off before she goes under. Like there's times like when she goes blue phase for the first time, you can do two pipe shots and then Tebow, and you'll get the Tebow on the last tick before she goes under. Like stuff like that is kind of cool. Um, saving your volatile specs for the um, melee phase because it has higher defense. Kind of interesting. Plus you're doing eight-way switches and that kind of thing. A lot of running around, a lot of skill involved. Um, it's somewhere between B and A. Hmm. Zora genuinely has a lot going on. Now, I think it's a high B tier, though. Like, he can't put... Zolra in A. Like, it's not crazy. There is some cool stuff you can do, though. Um, okay, I've got Winter Tot in here because the game considers it a boss. I don't. Uh, chop logs and throw them in fire over and over until boss is dead. Very, very good fight. Very skill. Um, you've actually got to time it, so when you chop that tree, uh, when your inventory fills up, you have to go and click the brazier. I'm not even going to pretend anymore. Boss sucks. Winter Tot's stupid. Uh, pretty terrible scaling content. It's better than clicking logs over and over, I guess, but that's about all it has going for it. Um, Hespori. Hespori's a little interesting. Um, if you're doing a speed run, like you can chally to skip a phase if you hit over 100. No. No, it's an F. Uh, there's not much going on with Hespori. Like, come on. Um, Krill. Krill has a lot of different methods. Um, solo, there's 5 0 with a Tebow, which involves like red clicking and that kind of thing. Um, you can dolo, you can trollo, you can go nuts. You can have resupply alts pulling you, gear, pulling you more supplies. Any of that is pretty interesting. Um, I think it's still B tier. It's not a lot of skill with like even 5-0, like you're just clicking on the right tiles and then clicking Krill. Like yeah, it's gonna it's gonna have a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not exceptional. Um, I'll go back through these tiers as well and order them uh, later. I'm not gonna worry about that for now. Um, okay, I'm gonna, this is Nightmare. I'm gonna just assume we're talking about Fosani's because um, it's pretty much replace regular Nightmare. Fosani's. I'm not a huge fan of Nightmare, to be honest. Um, Nightmare has a bunch of phases. She has a big health pool that you're you're hitting with Crush. She has very high defense. Um, and then after that, she transitions to a totem phase where you do an eight-way into magic. 
and then you're uh, killing the totems with magic. Some of the special attacks she uses are interesting. Um, like the husks are cool that you can protect against them if you're really smart about it. Um, if you hit them in the right order, you can avoid all damage from those. Uh, Parasite you can time correctly so it doesn't heal Nightmare. Um, dodging the shadows is interesting, I guess. They hit you really hard. Everything with Nightmare is just it kills you in two hits. So it's if you make two mistakes in a row, you die. Um, it's got to be A tier content. It is good. I, I don't think I could put it lower. It, it does take a lot of skill and a lot of practice, and you'll get better as you move on. But it's not... It's lacking something. It's hard to put into words. Um, just a boss that hits high and then that's it? Like, the skill is not making a mistake? I don't know. I'm not hugely into that. I'm more into content that pushes you to push yourself for better times or getting more damage in and that kind of thing. And Nightmare doesn't really do a whole lot of that. Um, all right, Dawn and Dusk. Dawn and Dusk, I think, is the most mechanically interesting uh, Slayer boss, genuinely. Um, bunch of phases, lots of switching gear. Um, you can get last hits in with, like, Chally and Ballista. I just did a video on this. Um, it's horrible loot, which is why a lot of people don't like it. But I'm not basing this tier list off loot. I'm, I'm basing it off how interesting the fight is. And I think there's worse fights than Grotesque. Um, I think it's between A and B. I mean... I don't think I can put it in A. I think it's high B. Um, Grotesque is... Yeah, you're doing an eight way sometimes, but it's mostly just hitting the boss and then like moving away from things on the ground. Like it's not super complicated. Heal skip is just shooting the boss a lot until it dies and hoping you do damage. And you know, the end is just Ulm. It's just switching prayer to whatever the boss's attack was. I don't know. It's good, but it's not like crazy. Um, okay, next. This will be controversial, I think. Um, it's not S tier. It's high A tier, though, I think. I'm just going to throw things in tiers for now. Nex has more going on than people give her credit for. Um, I do a lot in um, four-man teams. So we'll bring in a uh, Rapier Switch and then a four-way to Tebow. And then we've actually sold our ZCBs because they've. we don't want to hold on to that, but... Um, you would also bring a ZCB switch with your Tebow for hitting necks. So it's like you're hitting the boss with the rapier and then you're going to the minion. You're quickly switching into Tebow and then attacking that. Um, but mostly it's the skill of getting her where you want her, which is interesting. Um, Shadow phase, one of the most annoying things she can do is just she has the embrace darkness attack, which if she decides to enter melee mode on someone, that will just kill you. Like, it'll hit you for 20s over and over and over, and she'll just stay in range, and you can't escape, and you die. But if you're planning ahead of time to avoid that, we specifically position ourselves when fighting Fumis um, so that we can reset her to the middle before Umbra. And then on Shadow Phase, we're hitting her from a specific area to prevent her from getting close to anybody. And if she enters melee mode, what we do is we go under her to reset her back to the middle. It's actually kind of interesting. There's more stuff going on. You're controlling the boss's position, which I really like. Um, and there's some stuff you can do in the other phases, too. Like having one person be in range of next, but everybody else out of range so they don't take any damage. There's a dichotomy going that people kind of just ignore and just range the boss and don't think and turn off their brain. But if you turn on your brain here, there is some mechanics to abuse, and it's kind of interesting. So... I, it's definitely an A tier, like, no question. As much as people don't like this boss, um, I think it's solid. I think there's some interesting stuff going on. Um, Cerberus. Uh, so, what's interesting about Cerberus? You do this with Scythe. Um, well, there's this whole, like, algorithm with his auto attacks that you can learn if you want, um, so you can protect against everything. That's insanely difficult, and it's like not even worth the effort involved to learn that. 
Um, his only interesting special is really the ghosts. That's what everyone talks about. But it's just every two ticks you switch a prayer to the color of the ghost. Like, it's not complicated whatsoever. Um, you can dodge his initial lava pool if you time it right by moving under him. I do that a lot. That's kind of interesting. I don't know. Serb doesn't have a lot going on. I think he's our first C, C tier. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of interesting mechanics and thought going in, but like half the fight's pretty much AFK. Like, not a whole lot going on. Um, most interesting thing is running a resupply alt if you've got one of those, and that's not really interesting either, so. Armadil. Armadil. Armadil is an interesting fight solo. Um, you're doing this two tick on the boss and one tick when you're attacking on the minion with your chins, so you can prevent melees. Um, if you're doing this dolo, it's almost AFK. You're just praying ranged in rigor and, like, chinning. <sighs> um... Jeez, I think... I think Kree's genuinely a high C-tier boss. Um... There's just not a lot going on. Um... You juggle food. That's so fun. That's my favorite thing to do, is juggle food. Uh... Just mechanically, there's not a whole lot going on. It's cool that you can freeze the boss over the minion by, like, targeting him. Uh, and that's about it. Like, it's just left-click the boss, and then he dies. There's a little more going on than that, but... Yeah, I think C-tier I'm comfortable with. It's not a great boss. Uh, I've got archaeologists here. I'm lumping this in with all the archaeologists and Fnatic. Like, they all are going in F. They're not interesting bosses. Um... They throw bucks or like green energy snot that blows up and hurts you if you're in the middle of it, so you have to move out of the way. And other than that, it's attack the boss. Yeah, great design. Uh, no, not too good. I'm not into it. Okay, Hydra. Uh, can you count three attacks? Then you're good at this boss. That's about it. Hydra has a little bit of interesting stuff going on. There's, um,. You can lure the boss onto the vents early to do some extra DPS a little bit faster. Um, there's electricity skip, there's fire skip, but those are so easy and simple. Like it's not going to take you long to learn those. Like you can you can get all these mechanics down in ten or twenty kills, genuinely. <sighs> uh, nah, no C tier boss. I don't really like Hydra. It's boring. It's count to three over and over. It's so mindless. Uh, and mindless bosses aren't good. Okay, KQ. <laughs> KQ's special mechanic is she just hits you through armor. That's a really cool mechanic. We love that. No, we don't. That's terrible. That's stupid. Um, you do an eight-way in between phases, it's like 15 seconds. Anyone could do that with half a brain stem. Uh, and you eat in between phases. It's really skilled to like walk under her and eat food and then walk out. No, this doesn't take any thought. Go under the boss over and over and hit her over and over. That's so interesting. Um, it would be like a high F tier, probably. Not a great boss. Not a whole lot of thought going on. I hate this design of, like, armor just doesn't do anything. That's stupid. Like, just negating a mechanic entirely? Like, why? Oh, Corp. <laughs> I keep... <laughs> How could you put Corp anywhere else? Corp is so bad. Uh, Drain is all his defense and then go hit him with a spear. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, a little more interesting in groups in that you drain him less before fighting him. Like... It's not interesting. Um, most interesting mechanic with Corp is probably walking back and forth on the um, Dark Core, but there's ways of freezing it in place, like, and that's what everybody does. They just abuse that. So, yeah. Again, it'd be higher F tier. Um, okay. Jagex considers Temporas a boss. I think Temporas is actually kind of interesting if you do Firefighter. Um, Again, plays into the Sepulchre, like, movement tech with the firefighting. 
Uh, you're moving efi around efficiently, so you're like close to a bunch of fires and you can put them out faster. Uh, it's boring for the first half. You don't do much. <laughs> oh, man. Between C and B. Uh, if I put Zulcano in B, I gotta put Tempros in B, genuinely. Um, I think Firefighter is interesting, and I do enjoy it. But it's real boring for the first bit. And if you do any other way of doing Temporos, like not solo, um, or the solo methods that are for XP, it's pretty boring. So it'd be lower than Zalcano, probably. Okay, Sire. Sire, Sire, Sire. How's this fight play out? You Shadow Barrage the boss so he gets stunned and those tentacles don't hit you at the beginning. Then you kill the respirators with magic. And then the boss comes down off his high horse and he decides to fight you. And you just hit him over and over. Um, if you have an ult, you'll land hammer. One hammer. And then you'll claw. And then midway, he'll saunter over to the middle of the room very, very slowly. And... It's cool that the last bit of the fight is like time attack, where the boss is getting harder and harder. Um, uh, but that doesn't play great in a game with RNG where you have the potential to flop, because sometimes you just get screwed over. Like your scythe just doesn't hit, or whatever you're using, Arclight. Mm. With an alt, it's not bad. You can stay there, and... That makes it a lot less bad than if you do something like the POH method or something. Mm, what skill is involved at Sire? Let's think. You walk the square at the end of the fight. That's not really skilled. Uh, there's a little bit with the respirators, like moving on as soon as you see the XP drop. Oh man, there's just no skill. I think Sire is another C tier. Sire is not exceptional. Um, yeah, I'm, it'd be a higher C tier. Like there's a little bit of thought going on, but like, it's not great. Uh, okay. Grardor. Okay. Genuinely solo the melee method with like shield flicking and going under the boss to set up the pattern with the minion. So you can flick everything. That's crazy skilled. Like that's some impressive control. And controlling the boss's like attack pattern by going under him when you want to. That's that's a lot of thought going on. Very cool to see on like Iron Man and that kind of thing doing that method. Um Bofa method's cool too. I forget what that's called, like 9-0 or 7-0, whatever it is. I made a video on it. Uh where you're clicking around the room constantly. A lot more interesting than like the cycles for like Zami, where you're like actually going around in like this crazy pattern. Ooh, um, does Gardor transcend and go into A tier? Duo or Dolo, it's just like hit the boss, which is boring. That's what makes this list hard, right? There's so many methods for everything, and the method you choose could be interesting or not interesting. I'm going to put him in A tier. I think the shield method is that good that... He transcends. It's probably a lower A tier. But I think Grador is really interesting if you fight him in an interesting way. Um, I've got Dagonoth uh, Prime here. I, th I'm lumping all the DKs into one boss because that's they pretty much are. It's three different styles of bosses. Um, if you fight this way, boss in the boring way where you're going in one cave and you're waiting for them to respawn, it's F. Like That's the least interesting thing possible. But if you want to step it up, which I like in bosses. I like it when you can step it up. Uh, and you go back and forth between two caves. It gets pretty interesting. You're off-ticking um, Supreme and Prime reactively. This is one of the only pieces of reactive content other than the Inferno, which is cool. Um, it's annoying when they're same ticked. You can't really do much about it other than go run under Supreme or whatever. Um, but it is a lot of fun, like off-ticking them and that kind of thing. It's not really, like, crazy skilled, though. I think... I think it would go in a high B tier. Genuinely. Um, it does take some skill, and there's a lot of thought involved uh, with setting up off-ticks and that kind of thing. Um, 
But once you have a method down, it's you're not going to get any better at it. It's quite simple once you have it. But it will take some time to get to that. Um, okay, Chaos Ellie. Chaos Ellie is the only wilderness boss you like genuinely fight uh, besides Scorpia. Um, and it's a little more going on than Scorpia. It has purely random attack styles. Um, I believe you protect against magic. That prevents the most damage. Um, it, it can attack with melee ranged or magic, just randomly. Um, it teleports you around, which is annoying. I think the item takeoff is like the most interesting thing because that has some skill involved. You can um, leave one inventory spot open and then it'll use that attack sometimes, which won't damage you. Uh, so it's like a free attack. Is that enough to keep it out of F? It's in high wildy, so like the scale is escaping people in multi, which you're not really going to do usually. I think it gets a low C. It's at least somewhat interesting. Um, it teleporting you around and that kind of thing, but for the most part, it's just annoying. Um, I like the fact it's a fast wildy boss. I wish if I hate wildy pets in general, genuinely. Um, I wish more wildy pets would follow this like cycle of having a really high drop rate and being pretty fast to kill, so you're not stuck in the wilderness forever. I hate that. So I think that helps it as well, but... Um, Seracnus. Okay. This is a mid-level boss that isn't for mid-levels. Um, it's for high levels that want elite clues or the pet. Which I think is bad. Bad design. Um... It does have mechanics going on. You're protecting melee, and then when it webs you, you're praying ranged because you're guaranteed to get hit. A ranged attack. And if you stand within this specific square, you're only going to get hit once by range. Um, and she spawns the melee and the mage spiders. So you need mage defense. So it encourages you to wear like high mage defense like Carol's. Um, it's a C tier, again. Um, it has some mechanics going on and there's a little bit of thought, but like just the bare minimum. Like it's not crazy. Um... Better than some of these bosses, but not a whole lot going on. Uh, Venonatus is an easy F. You don't fight this boss. You safe spot it and then AFK and hover your seed pod and pray no Picaris show up. Um, it's a little more interesting with the cannon tech. Like if you mess up the safe spot, then you can go back and forth from the cannon spot. It's so annoying when that happens though. You're just losing DPS due to a random spawn of the boss. Like that's awful. Um, I think all the wildy bosses that you can safe spot are going in F, genuinely. Like you shouldn't be able to do that. Um, so the only skill involved with this boss is clicking a seed pod when you see a red dot show up. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, no, not a fan. Venonata sucks. Uh, Giant Mole. Okay. I think Giant Mole is the best mid-level boss in the game. And let me tell you why. Um, it has 200 health. Uh, when it goes below 100 health, it's capable of digging around the room, which is annoying, and you want to avoid that. It's a random chance for each hit spot on the boss. That's interesting because it encourages you to use a slow, heavy-hitting weapon like Darox or a Tebow. Um, which is good. I don't think any other boss in the entire game does that. So mechanically, that's interesting. You don't want to do things like Claw Spec or DDS Spec because that's a hit splat each. So that's not good. Um, but it is so annoying. It also encourages you to find safe spots. There's like all around the room. This is what taught me corner safe spots for Inferno, genuinely, with the melees. Um, really helpful if you want to learn that. Like, forcing yourself to find safe spots for Mole as he digs around the room. He digs just like the Inferno melee. It's pretty much an Inferno melee. Uh, can I... Can I rightfully put Mole in B tier? No. No, I cannot. It's a highest C tier, I think. There is more going on with Mole than people give it credit for, but it's not, not exceptional. Move these while I'm thinking of it. I'm gonna go back through at the end of the video and reorder all the tiers, so it's obvious like what's going on. 
Uh, Zilliana. Zilliana. Sarah Boss. Um... Tibor ACB, the meta doesn't change. It's still five tick weapons. It's just slower with an ACB and faster with a Tebo. It's running a big square around the room and click the boss every five ticks. That's pretty lame, I think. Um, you can flick the minions if you want. That That's some skill. Um, Dolo, you can stay there almost forever. And your ult just kills the minions and gives you run energy only boss in the game that really like requires purple sweets besides like challenge mode for speedruns uh, the skill involved is just flicking minions if you want to and you don't have to with an ult so it's just running a square shoot the boss I think Sylian is genuinely the least interesting God Wars boss thinking about it I think it's a high seat tier as well yeah Zillianna's really boring. There's very little skill involved. I'm gonna put her right here for now. Uh, okay. Hanyef. Um, I have the blue version here. I'm considering Gauntlet one piece of content, both Corrupted and Normal. Normal Gauntlet is like an easy mode that steps you into Corrupted. Uh, lets you learn the content in a safe way. Um... What's cool about Gauntlet is I think it has the lowest skill floor and the highest skill cap in the entire game. Um, not the highest skill cap of any content, obviously, but it has, like, the widest gap in skill. Like, you can start really bad at a boss and then work your way up and get really good, which is good. I think that's one of the best design uh, features of Gauntlet. Um, what I don't like about Gauntlet is as you get really, really good, like you're getting faster and faster, at some point you're gonna just have to start chancing to get any faster. Um, like once you're below, I think it's like 10 fish or something is a guaranteed kill. So once you're doing a run that's a perfect 10 fish kill um, with the prep, it's pretty much just working your way down in fish and chancing and if you don't hit hard enough and the boss hits you too hard, then you just die. Which is bad. I don't like that. I don't like that the skill cap is just arbitrarily lower than it needs to be. I don't even know what they could do to Honey F to make it not that, but I don't like that. Um, it's still A tier. It's great content. Um, I just don't like that, personally. Um, I'll figure out where it goes later on in A tier, but it's, it's not S. It's good content, though. Um, okay, fight caves. Regular fight caves, just like on a standard run, probably like B tier. Um, the skill involved is like safe spotting things, and um, Jad is kind of hard, I guess, if it's your first time. It's a little scary. It's the end of a long fight caves. But speedruns, on the other hand, are crazy skill intensive. Um, use a third age bow. You're doing long ranged, fast hits on things far away. You've got the whole pattern laid out. You use a website to figure out where you got to run next for the next wave. You're making sure that you're not dragging enemies. It's got that same kind of skill as Inferno speedruns, um, but it's faster and it's um, simpler. Uh, to do speeds, you still have to grind out Slayer tasks, which I don't like. There is like off-task speedruns people do, which is good. I'm glad there's a category for that. Um... Man, fight caves are crazy skilled. I think it goes in S. That's my first S tier content. Um, I'm considering content in its best light, and speedrunning fight caves is good. Probably the bottom of whatever I put in S. Um, yeah, there's so much going on. It's venging stuff when you have health and drinking Guthix's rest to not waste ticks and double venging Jad, so you have like one health left at the end of the fight and then just immediately killing him. You can bring claws if you want, some people do that, some people don't. A lot of meta thought and um, just really interesting in general to speedrun. Um, okay, moving on to Inferno. Best content in the game, uh, by far, by far. Uh, if I had an SSS tier, it would go up there, but I don't, so it's just going top of S. Uh, 
Okay, Inferno's the only reactive content in the game. Um, the waves are pure, are purely random, and you have to immediately react to what is spawning and how to solve it. It's like a, it's like a speed chess match. Um, you're trying to make moves as fast as you can um, to not lose ticks um, and to get safe. You're constantly at low health due to taking hits from things and trying to heal it up as efficiently as possible. Um, I'm looking at this from a speedrun perspective because that makes it the best content in the game. It's still S tier even on a normal run though because you still got that reactive content. You're trying to solve each wave as quickly and effectively as possible so you take the least amount of resource hit. Um, and oh my god, the things like Atacon does or... The people in the Inferno speedrunning Discord are insane, like scythe tech to make things die faster because melee hits immediately, and not dragging NPCs so they die a tick faster, and and killing things in the right order because their death animations are longer so you can start the next wave fast. There is so much thought going on. And with Jads, like for triple Jads, you want to stand in the right place so the healers lure behind you more likely so they heal less, and then you want to chin them faster, and then, and oh my god, with Zuck, like... Oh, it's insane. The skips people do, like, you tag the mage and you don't kill it, and then you tag Jad and you off-tick those with two ticks in between so you can protect against both. And then you, when the healers pop up for Zuck, you're you're tagging every healer, and then you're also flicking the, the mage and Jad as you go back and forth with the healers while trying to avoid their meteors while also hitting... Z yeah, it's mind-boggling that people are able to do that, and it's, it's RuneScape at its best. That's what it is. Inferno is a RuneScape at its best. No one will ever hit the skill cap on Inferno, ever. There is always going to be improvements. No one will ever be perfect. And that's what's great about it. You can't beat Inferno. Like, what else, can, what else is there to say? It's the best content in the game. No question in my mind. Okay, moving on to some more boring bosses. <laughs> um, Vorkath is interesting. Um, mostly due to his acid walk, your Wooks walking, um, I like it better with Dragon Hunter Crossbow, it's a little more interesting than just going back and forth. There's some thought involved with the acid on the ground and that kind of thing. Um, but DHCB isn't technically, well, it might be technically faster now with ZCB. That might be the best method for grinding, I'm not sure. There's also Torvo with Lance, so it's questionable. Uh, anyways, um... There's not a ton going on with Orkath. You're just avoiding his fireball occasionally. Um, with Lance, if you want to avoid melees, you can Wooks walk the whole kill, which is annoying, not really skilled. Um, and then when you get frozen for that special attack, you just cast at the spawn. There's not a lot of thought going on. It's just click as fast as possible. Um, I think it's in the same category as Zelra. It's probably lower than Zelra. I'll put it in B, though. Vorkath isn't bad. Uh, but it's not great either. It's not the best content in the game. Uh, Vidian's an easy F. I'm gonna order F tier as well. Um, Vedion might be the worst Willy boss in the entire... It is now. Okay. Yeah, with the X-logging change, it's no question. Vedion is the worst Willy boss. Um, you're just above level 30 Wilderness when you fight him in quotes, fight him. You, um, which means you can't teleport. It's in multi. It's only like five steps to singles. Um, so before the way you would escape is pray it's not a huge group of people that attack you. Um, run to singles and then run around the fence to the red spiders. And then uh, axe logging on them, which is Kind of lame in itself, but you can't do that anymore. So now it's pretty much just tank all the way to the ditch or a ladder somewhere, I guess. You're, you're going to die at Vedion. You're suiciding to get pet. Which is awful. Awful design. Um, uh, you At least you're doing a cycle when you're hitting him. Um, you, do, you walk up a tile, go down, hit him a few times, then go back. You know, that kind of thing. That's okay. Um, and then the hounds, you can drag back to 30 wildy so you can teleport while killing them, which is good. 
Yeah, I think Vedion's the worst wildy boss, which makes it one of the worst bosses in the game. Um, it's horrible. It's horrible content. Um, moving on. Barrows. Barrows, I think, is also good mid-level content. Um, and it's what they should strive for if they ever add more of that. I don't think they should add many mid-level bosses. They're not that interesting, but... Um, Barrows is Prey Melee and Mage most of them. Um, you might bring a melee switch for Arim. A lot of people just mage straight through it. Um, the maze at the end is somewhat interesting, but you just bypass that with a strange lockpick. Uh, there's no pet, which is good. All mid-level content should not have a, a pet, in my opinion. That keeps mid-levels grinding the content instead of high levels. This is genuinely mid-level content for mid-levels. Um, it's in C tier. It's in C tier. Uh, it's got to be below Mole, I think. It's less interesting. Um, but it is it is solid uh, mid-level content. It's about as good as you can make mid-level content. It and Mole. Um, and you can see they're both in C tier. So like maybe they should stop adding the mid-level bosses and worrying about that. Uh, boss things for high levels, right? Um, okay, Callisto. We're going to move Vidion over. I think Callisto is second worst. Willy boss. Um, it wasn't affected by X-logging. You still escape the same way you would. Um, it's cool that on an all on a different world, you can lure this boss. Um, so you constantly have this, like, with an alt, you're, like, luring the boss and then killing it on your main on a different world and then hopping. That's kind of interesting. There's nothing in the game really like that. Uh, but you're not killing a boss. You're AFK hitting it over and over uh, and summoning a thrall. Uh, it has, I think, the highest defense of any boss you fight in the game. Maybe Venonatus is higher. I can't remember. It's absurd how high his defense is. To the point where thralls are, like, 20% of your DPS or something like that. That's not good. That's not good design. No, high defense bosses suck. They're not fun to fight. Um, what else is there to say? Oh, my bone dagger tech definitely puts it up in S tier, though. Because um, when your alt uses vulnerability, you can use a bone dagger as your first hit on the main. Huge meta meta defining. When I make this guide, it's going to be earth shattering, I'm telling you. Um, not much content in the game. You can use a bone dagger out, which definitely makes it a good boss. But it's saying enough. Uh, Mimic. I'm going to be Debbie Downer a lot of this tier list, it seems like. There's not a lot of interesting... There's a lot of bosses in the game, and a lot of them are not that interesting. Uh, Mimic is... You... Go in full max melee with claws, and you spec twice. And then you switch into max mage, and then you hit it, and it dies in about five seconds. So, yeah. F tier. <laughs> Um, I don't think it's supposed to be a crazy boss. It's just like a nice little loot roll on a clue scroll. So I don't, I don't feel bad that it's horribly designed. Well, not horribly designed, but not like exceptional. So that's okay. But it's enough tier. Um, okay, Tecton. <sighs> I'm gonna go through all the raids bosses now. Okay, Tecton is somewhat interesting. You have this. You can either do a cycle with his hits where you're um, you're on him every third tick, or you can run around him in a square. His animation breaks if you run around him in a square, so it looks like he's hitting you, but it's not. Uh, oh, man. I don't really like Tecton. The problem with Tecton is he's another one of those high defense bosses. If you hit hammers, he's fun, and you'll shred him. If you don't hit hammers, he sucks, and nobody likes him. Um, there's the tech in challenge modes where you like land a vulnerability which is good uh, you'll like lure him over and then your whole team will hit him <sighs> Tecton is reset city and CMs too he's not good <sighs> I think he's a lower B tier he has some mechanics going on um, you can do like a last hit as he's walking to the anvil with a harder hitting weapon like your scythe instead of mace uh to do more damage and hope he dies there's not a whole lot of thought going on in skill I hate that he regenerates defense as he goes to the anvil too that sucks 
Yeah, Tecton's a lower B. I'm not a huge fan. Not a huge fan. Muddy Dial's... Uh, worst boss in the game? Yeah, worst boss in the game. Muddy Dial's awful. Um, how does the Muddy Dial fight go down? Um, you have options. You can freeze. Okay, so Muddy Dial has the little one at first, and then the big one's underwater, and he's casting at you completely randomly. So you just randomly take mage hits. And this little Muddy Dial is the most sporadic little crocodile. He will sometimes decide to back off you and sometimes decide to approach you. And so you're praying range most of the time. And when he decides to come up and bite you, you're going to pray melee. And then he'll still sometimes decide to range you even when he's biting you. So you can try to safe spot him around the tree. But then like sometimes he just decides he doesn't want to be safe spotted. And he comes around the tree. Awful. Awful. So there's ways around chopping that tree so he doesn't heal. You could freeze him. He's one mage. That requires someone beyond ancients. Um, so let's say you do that, and then you kill him, and then Big Mudda comes out. Well, now you can't really freeze Big Mudda because she has a crazy high mage level. So like, you have to bring a ZGS as well if you want to do that. Um, so in CMs at most scales, you just chop the tree. So as you're chopping the tree, you just get wailed on. Um, you can get comboed for insane health. In one hit, you can take, I think, a 60, maybe higher. Uh, awful. Awful. Um, I hate the randomness in their movements. The mud is just aside, they don't want to be safe spotted today sometimes, and they whip around. Uh, what's great about that is Big Mudda, um, has an instant kill melee attack, which is just... Who designed this boss? Like, it's awful. It's horrible. They've done things to make it less bad, too, like make them combo for less... They made the lowest hit higher and then the highest hit lower, so it, like, has less combo potential, but you can still get comboed. Like, it's not... I'd be happy with this boss being removed from the game. It is that bad. Um, yeah. I hate Mudda Dial. One of the big reasons I want to make this video was to rant about <laughs> Mudda Dial, so there you go. Um, Vespula. We cheese Vespula. We don't do it the intended way. I don't think most people know how to do Vespula the intended way, where you like shoot down Vespula and then hit the portal until she gets back up and then shoot her down again. Um, what we do is we pray rigor and redemption, and then we go through this specific this specific tile pattern and Tebow the portal and then run back and then back and forth, back and forth. You can use prayer enhance so you don't waste any prayer potions, or you can just make a bunch of extra prayer potions in a CM and just use those. Um, it's a DPS check. It's can you shoot fast enough? Can you do damage to the portal that has really stupid defense? That's kind of a, a through line in Cox. Everything has really high defense and you have to drain it, but you can't drain Vespila because it's outside melee distance, so. Uh, I think Vespila is a high C tier. Yep. Vespila sucks. It's not skilled. It's going back and forth and hitting the boss. Not much to say. Uh, Vanguards is one of the better fights in Cox, I think. Um, there's three Vanguards. There's a Mage, a Melee, and a Ranged, and you have to use the Combat Triangle to hit them. Uh, you don't have to use a specific style, but they have high defense against everything else. Um, they have to be killed in the same time as each other. Um, you can't do too much damage to one or they reset and they heal to full. I don't like that. I like it. It's mechanically interesting to keep bosses in the same he health threshold, but them resetting and getting all their health back is a lame way of punishing you for extending Paza. I prefer it like, what if it did something like rained meteors when you went outside their health threshold and then you had to quickly get it back in the line or something like that. Uh, I prefer that, but this is the way it is. Um, it's still interesting. There's a lot of thought involved in like keeping their health similar and um, when to drop your claw specs on the right phase and that kind of thing. Um, Vanguard's is good. I think that healing mechanic holds it back. I think I'd put it... If it did the meteor thing I was talking about or something like that, uh, where it punished you with damage instead of just resetting the fight, 
Probably be high A. I think it's high B, though. Uh, Vanguard's is a good fight, but, like, it's annoying. And annoying stuff can happen. If you hit really hard with a Tebow shot, eh. Unlucky, you just have to restart the whole fight. That's stupid. But it's not bad. It, there's a lot of thought that goes on and a lot of skill involved. The safe spots are kind of interesting, too. There's some learning involved there. Um, okay, Vasa. Vasa, again, is one of the better fights. Um, how's the fight go with Vasa? Um, she instantly health bombs you at the beginning of the fight, so what people do is they will heal up to full. They'll heal up to full, and then they will um, venge the boss. Um, they'll purposely take the hit and just venge. That's kind of interesting. I think it's the only boss where venge is actually better than thralls, um, technically. Which is good. We need more stuff like that. Um, it waddles around the room towards a crystal, and then you just dodge rocks. A little bit of skill involved with the rocks, you can tacti tactically take a venge to damage the boss more. And you're just T-bowing or piping it. Um, and when it gets to a crystal, you're really quickly doing an eight-way into stab and hitting it or clawing it until that crystal goes down. And you typically get uh, two or three crystals to kill Vasa before she goes to the middle of the room and she bombs you again. Um, it's a DPS check like Vespula, but not a bad one. Not annoying in the way it does it. Uh, is Vasa better than Vanguard's? I think there's less skill to Vasa, but it's less annoying. They'd probably go right next to each other. Um, and I'll, I'll order these later, don't worry. I'm going to do that at the end of the video. I've said that a few times. Um, yeah, I think Voss is still an interesting fight, but it's not exceptional either. That's kind of crazy. Not a single regular Cox boss made it into A tier. Nah, hey, what can you do? I don't think they're that interesting. Um, okay, Ohm. Ohm is one of the best fights in the game. There is so much skill and thought involved with cycles and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to put him in S tier. And most, the, the big thing about Ulm that's good is he's like Gauntlet, where it's, you're prepping the whole raid to prepare for this one final battle. So the skill involved is how much prep you have to do. Um, uh, and at some point it's no prep, which is cool. I like that. Um, it's a lower S tier boss, I think. Uh, you eventually will hit the skill cap on this boss, but it's going to take a while. Um... And I'm talking solo specifically. In teams, uh, Ulm is really simple, usually. Um, but there is text involved in team as well. Um, in solo, there's one to four method for melee. Um, or four to one. So you get four melee hits, and then you dodge his special. And then you come back and you dodge the next attack while getting four hits each cycle, not losing any text, which is cool. Um, and there's 4-0 magic where you take no hits from Ulm and you're doing the specific cycle so you mage the hand over and over. And then you can do 4-0 um, on the last phase because the hand doesn't cripple and you can go back and forth over and over doing gear switches and you'll never take a hit. Uh, but you have to switch gear really, really quickly. So there's skill involved to avoid damage. I like that. Um, there's flame skip. So if you're standing next to a wall, it doesn't shoot that flame skip or in like the dead center of the room. Um... The head phase, I don't like that you can go... Eh, that's not bad either. Uh, the standard way for the head is you take a hit every, like, four turns. Um, or you can skip ticks on your Tebow if you're really desperate and you're out of food to avoid all damage, which is cool. Um, he has so many special attacks. The teleports are the most annoying one, I think. Um, I don't like those. I don't like that it in solo just randomly can put it in a corner of the room. That's annoying. I wish it was a set distance or something like that. Um, what else is interesting with Ulm? He does the thing with the attacks where you want to use the protection prayer of whatever he used last, which is okay. That's fine for a boss. Um, what holds back Ulm like all the other Cox bosses, is the melee hand defense. If you don't land a hammer, it's really annoying and it takes forever. Which is not cool. I don't like any boss that's like that. Um, 
but it's minor. It's only one of the, like, three body parts. It's not horrible. Um, so, yeah. Uh, almost a good fight, definitely. But not, like, the top of S tier or anything. It's just solid. It's solid. It's going to take you forever to hit that skill cap. So, I think that's good. Uh, chambers as a whole. Okay. Um... Chambers has a ton of thought in the layout of the raid. Uh, lots of scouting thought and, like, what's a good layout? Um, scouting sucks. Uh, nobody likes doing that. So, like, part of the skill is if you have ults, you can scout as you do the raid, which is annoying. Nobody likes doing that either. Oh, man. I think regular Chambers is solid it is interesting but it's not s tier it's a tier uh i'll figure out where that lands later but yeah it's lacking something the scouting holds it back as well and like i said all the bosses the regular bosses aren't like amazing like you don't need a ton of skill to do them it's really just ohm but it's still good content it's good content challenge mode challenge mode raids can I... There's a ton of skill to CM specifically. Um, really cool teamwork. Um, what's good about CMs? You can... For example, you can do Vanguard's prep. So at the beginning of a CM, you normally prep. Um, and as you're learning, you might do that with your whole team. Um, as you get better, you might leave one person to prep and then have the rest of your team go down and kill vanguards and then have them start doing thieving and then have your prepper finish the prep and then come up to you guys and help you finish thieving. Um, there's a lot of skips on bosses. You can do tightrope skip, which is cool. Um, and there's a lot of boring downtime. Uh, Guardians is boring. Vespila is boring. Thieving is boring. Ice Demon is boring. Um, there's skill involved with crabs, lots of communication there. I mean, you'll hit the skill cap pretty fast on that, but it is interesting. CMs, the skill is all, um, mostly logistical stuff. It's pulling stuff out that you need for the next rooms efficiently and not wasting time baking. I don't think that's the most interesting skilled thing in the game. Um, my other problem with CMs is everything just has a defense cranked for no reason. Um, and it's really annoying missing hammers. Uh, and Mudder Room is one of the worst. It's horrible in CMs, especially. It's way worse than regular cocks. It's horrible. Horrible. Oh, man. I can't leave CMs out of S tier, though. It's so skilled. Um... Is it the most fun content? No. Is it good content? Yes. No, I can't in my right mind put challenge mode in lower than S. It's... Ah. I think on the right day you could convince me to put CMs in A. So it's got to be bottom of S, lower than Ulm, whatever that means. But as, as a whole, I think CMs is good content with a lot of problems, um, especially the loading lines in CMs. You can lag for like three ticks as you load the next chunk of the, the room. That's really just like engine problems. Like, it's just a bug with the game. Like, that's not, that's not good. Um, all right, let's move on. Move on to the top bosses. Um, all right, Maiden. Maiden's great. I really like Maiden. Um, so the way Maiden works is you all want to be Scything. Scything is the best DPS against Maiden. So everybody's up next to the boss. Um, when she's approaching 70% health, you'll, you're going to have either one or two mages quickly switch into magic and cast freezes. Um, the freezing takes a lot of skill. If you're good at the game and you're tick perfect, you can freeze all of one side of the ticks. You do something called MG in a trio where you have the rest of your team kill the two ticks that are walking up on the other side of the room and you freeze the entire other side, which is cool. Um, there's also stacking, which is cool in higher scale, like four or five man, you can do stacking, um, which is you, you freeze your side, 
you'll, you'll have two mages. You'll freeze them all tick perfectly. And then you'll have the people DPSing the boss uh, drop claw specs to push that damage even further. And to hopefully spawn the next set of ticks quickly. And then you're freezing those on top of each other, so you're getting bonus damage from Barrage. And then you're just annihilating that clump of uh, ticks in the middle uh, with barrages and uh, chins and that kind of thing. That's cool. That's neat. I like that. Um, she throws blood occasionally. It punishes you if your team gets hit by it. Um, it's annoying that your entire team gets punished for a mechanic that one person messes up, but... I think it's okay. It's not impossible to dodge those bloods. It's pretty simple, actually. Um, so it really encourages you to play well. Um, it depends on the role you're doing as Maiden, how skilled it is. I think the mages have it the hardest. Um, and the melee the melee guy, his only fear is um, your team doing poorly and getting smashed because he's tanking the whole time. So It's good content, though. Um... Is made an S? Uh, hmm. Out of the fights in top, I think Maiden might be the best boss. I think it's in a high A tier. It's a high A tier. It doesn't quite break S, but it's good. So much skill involved. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think that's okay. Bloat. He is less interesting. There is a lot of skill involved still, though. Um, Bloat walks around this big central pillar, and he shoots flies if you are within line of sight. So you're always trying to stay out of line of sight. He will randomly, uh, not entirely randomly, but pseudo-randomly turn. It's within a set amount of time. Turn around and start going the other way. Um, you do half damage if you attack Bloat while he's up. So you have to wait until he goes down, which is roughly every 40 ticks. Um, and then you're just cramming damage into him while you can do damage. Uh, lots of lots of smart specking order and that kind of thing. Um, Bloat can stomp you after he gets back up if you're within line of sight. Uh, lots of smart stuff you can do with that. Uh, you can tick eat that attack. So what you can do is you can stay and get an extra hit if you want, uh, which can help you... Uh, get that two down more consistently, or the one down even if you're P-necking. P-necking is its own thing. I haven't even tried much of that, but... Yeah, that's pretty crazy as well. Um, I'm talking about it. I didn't really think Bloat would go that high, but I think it is a good fight. I think it's a lower A. Yeah, I think Bloat's still interesting. Uh, not a ton going on compared to some of these bosses. Uh, okay, Nilocus. I'm going to include the entire room and not just Vasilius at the end, the boss. Um, learners in Tob a lot of times think this is the most boring and dumb room of the entire raid. And I genuinely think it might be the highest skill room of the entire raid if you're trying to go fast. Arguable with Verzik. Those are, it's very close to Verzik in terms of skill. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're like, oh, Nilocus is that wave fight, right? Like, that's not that interesting. Um, what's good about it is the spawns are set, right? They're always coming down the exact same way. The same ones are aggressive and will attack your team as they always are. Um, the, only the only bits that are random are the big ones that uh, split into little ones when you kill them. Those are random which is good. It keeps you on your toes. There's a, uh, a a little dash of randomness, but it's not like... Oh, this boss is just random every time. You can't really learn much. You have... It'll take you a lot of raids to get good at any given roll. Like 50 to 100 to be pretty good at any given roll. The mage is running around the room, catching barrages at the right time, catching barrages on the pillars. The ranger's trying to figure out when to chin effectively, as well as pipe pretty hard to not lose ticks as ranger um and melee melee has it the least interesting but you're still like running around the room trying not to lose ticks with your three tick weapon um while running around is interesting um nylon room's crazy it's so skilled and Vasilius 
has a lot more going on than people think too. It's like, oh, just do switches fast. But um, if you do switches fast, uh, the boss is switching style over and over. You have to get your protection prayer up for that style or he hits you like crazy, like a 70. And you can only hit him with that style or else it's reflected back at you. So it's, um, there are styles that do more damage, right? So like mage is the worst. So you're trying to prioritize getting melee hits off and then ranged and then magic. So you can do like pre-switches. And um, if you want to get even more crazy, um, you can bank ticks. So if you have a Tebow, right? Let's say you've just saved two ticks because you just had a mage cycle, right? That's eight ticks out of a 10 tick cycle used. You can do um, you can do two Tebow shots. You can do a, a Tebow, a pipe, and then a Tebow. You can fit in that pipe shot because you've just saved ticks from the mage. So it's a lot of like saving ticks in your bank account and then spending them to do even more damage. You can do the same with Chally Specs as well. Um, if you bank enough ticks, you can do a Chally Spec and still get um, no hits lost, which is cool. Um, man, yeah, Nilo's bottom of S. I, I love Nilo Room. Nilo Room is great. So much thought going on, so much skill, so much flashy stuff you can do. It's great. Um, saving time is hard. I like it. Um, okay, Sodateg. The fight part of Sodateg, I don't think is that good. Um, he has three phases, and he has really high defense, and that defense resets every phase. So it's like, with your teammates, you'll set out an order of specs, so you're all specking efficiently. You're all ordering your specs properly and using them at the right time to drain the most defense possible on Soda Tag at all times. Um, it's annoying when your hammers miss. It's pure RNG. I don't like any mechanic in the game that involves draining defense. Um, and then there's the death orbs he shoots. So for Soda Tag's attacks, he does like melee attack sphere and melee range. And then he does a magic or a ranged attack. He'll always fire a magic attack at someone, and then that'll split off into two orbs that go at your teammates, and those can be magic or ranged. Um, there's a lot of skill in keeping your melee prayer up in between the orbs, so it's like very specific timing. That's not a ton of skill, but there is skill involved in doing that. Um, and it encourages you to get out of the stupid void setup when you're learning, because the extra defense from Bandos or Torvo is crazy. Um... The part I love about Sodateg is the mazes. Um, how do I put it into words? Uh, the maze picks a person, and they go to the underworld, and they get to see this maze laid out in front of them with all these tiles, with this big line they have to run. And the tiles that you run on in the underworld are what your team sees in the overworld. And if they do not... Um, follow you properly, or if you mess up, if you go over the wrong tiles and your team follows you into death, um, they take a dramatic amount of damage uh, per tick. It's like 20s. And if you go too slow, there's a tornado, so your teammates get punched in the overworld. Um, I don't like that the guy in the underworld isn't getting punched at all, other than like if your whole team wipes, he's probably dead too. But it's one of those like if you do it poorly, the rest of your team is getting punished, which Tob likes to do a lot. Um, there's a ton of skill in going fast through mazes, and there's a ton of skill in keeping up with someone fast in the maze. Um, I've killed so many learners uh, that I've been teaching Tob by just going like, hey, you gotta learn. I'm gonna go as fast as I can. If you don't keep up, you're dead. Um, and that makes people go fast, would you believe it or not? As mean as that is, it's, it is fun. Um, so what it's like is really bad for the main part, but really good for the maze part. Um, oh, also the death orbs that he shoots during the main fight. If you group up, you can spread the damage out to your teammates, or you can just ticky it. Um, so that has some interesting dichotomy. You want to pop Venges the entire fight and lose uh, health. There's no reason to keep your health high for this fight at all, especially because you can flinch over and over with Scythe. Um, it's A tier as well. As much as I don't like the main fight part, I, I do think it's an A tier fight. Especially with the mazes. There's a lot of skill that goes into Sodatseg. Okay, Zarpus. Zarpus is the easiest room in Tob, no question. I've never wiped there, I don't think. Um, 
The beginning of Zarpus is awful. I hate it. Um, these graves pop up, and you have to walk on top of them to prevent him from healing up extra armor for the next fight. Boring. Very boring. Um, I've suggested before that they just make it so you can, like, poke Zarpus and make him absorb all the health from the graves and just start the fight immediately or something. That'd be a lot better. Because that's just boring. Um... Let's think about this. Super easy to just go in a square around him and pipe. Scythe walking takes some skill. It's a cycle. Um, and it's a big learning curve. It usually takes people a while. Big problem with learning scythe walking is that it rags your teammates later. It, it hurts your team if you mess up. Just like the rest of Tob. That's kind of a through line to the whole theater. Is If you mess up, it hurts your team. Um, because it can mark those tiles for the later part of the fight. Um, there's five ticking with Scythe, which is even more skilled. Uh, you're purposefully ragging tiles that don't matter to your teammates that are next to Zarpus to get extra DPS off. That's cool. I love doing that. Um, and the end part of Zarpus is somewhat interesting as well. There's still, um, what we call 2-2-1. Two, two, We're getting two Scythe hits. Um, the way the last bit of the fight works is when Zarpus is facing a direction and you hit him, all that damage will be reflected back at you. So if you use a scythe, it'll just instantly kill you. You'll take 250 damage or whatever. Um, so there's skill involved in knowing when he's going to turn and what you can get away with. Uh, with scythe, you can do two scythe hits if you hit him tick perfect. And then another two scythe hits in the next time he turns. And then you can get one scythe hit when he turns the next time. And then that cycle repeats. That takes some skill. You're probably going to die trying to learn that a bit. Um... Yeah, Zarpus is a good fight as well. I think it would be wrong of me to put him anywhere but A tier. Even though it's not hard, you're never really going to wipe here unless something catastrophic happens. Um, it is still scale to go fast, which is good. Um, I'll figure out where he goes in the order at some point, but he's definitely an A tier. Okay, Verzik. Um, I considered splitting the phases into different bosses, but it's one boss. Like, if you think about it, um, Verzik would take me like 10 minutes to explain all the mechanics, so I'll try to go through it like quickly. Um, P1, you've got a throne with Verzik. She attacks, I forget what it is, every like 15 ticks or something. And it hits you up to like a 60 through Protect from Magic. If you're not praying Protect from Magic, it, it can just kill you. So you're going behind a pillar for cover. Um, it's most DPS to Scyther because that's three hit splats and your damage is capped at 10. It's efficient to Thrall her. Thralls do a lot of DPS. Um, and you can also throw in pre-hits. Um, so you can cast right as you come out from the pillar after she's attacked. Do a cast. You'll lose one tick on your Scythe swing, but that's okay because you can fit them both tick perfect. You can fit two Scythe swings and then go back behind the pillar. This is a tick-perfect cycle. That's kind of cool. That's interesting. Um, through the fight, you're casting Dawnbringer. You're just using specs efficiently across your team. That um, is the only thing that actually damages her. It's between a 75 and 150. It hits every time. Um, and it uses, I think, 35% spec. So you are you have a specific order. You go through the orb order usually with specs, dropping the, the staff in between each other and going through the specs. There's cool stuff you can do with that, too. You can pre-hit with the spec. Um, in Trio, you can do something called 112, where you do one scythe swing, or you do one spec. Um, the first person does one spec, and then drops it. Next person does one spec, and then drops it. And the next person does two specs before getting behind the pillar. That's all tick perfect. And then you go back and forth through the, the list of heal order. Um, there's also Hado for four man. Um... I think it's four man. I forget if there's a if that's Hado for five man. I haven't really done Hado. Um, but you're like tactically tanking um, hits from her to get more damage and faster. Um, so P1 is an interesting fight, even though it doesn't seem like it on paper. Uh, P2. P2 is probably the most boring. Um, once you're good at tub, it's going to be the craziest and most stressful while you're learning. But it's a four tick cycle on her attacks. If you're within melee range when she attacks, it bounces you for a bunch of damage, and then you get hit by uh, a pumpkin which she drops on the ground, or whatever those are, skull bombs. Um, so you're going back and forth in the specific cycle. With Scythe, it takes some practice. 
Um, what's interesting about P2? P2 has the... Uh, with the after 35%, she starts spawning healing crabs, um, which heal her for whatever health they have remaining. So you kind of like damage them to a low point and then get back on the boss. Um, there's a little bit of skill in guessing like what threshold you can not attack those crabs and just start hitting Verzik. Um, but not a ton. I think P2 has the least interesting like skill of the whole fight. Um, and then P3 is crazy. Um, she picks a tank. That tank needs to stay out of melee range when she attacks, the same as P2, but it's 7 tick, so it's kind of hard to learn. Um, she has a lot of crazy special attacks. She spum summons those ticks, those tick bombs, which you have to avoid. Uh, web running is really easy. It looks hard on paper, but it's not. Um, yellow tiles is really easy, too. It's just communicating with your team. Which is good. I like things that make you communicate. Um, the green ball is really kind of boring. It's just make sure your health is over 80 or whatever it is. I think it hits an 84. Just make sure your health is high enough to survive it. Oh, no. It's a 74. Yeah. Um, they added a mechanic to make you make it so you can bounce that around your teammates, but you don't bother in regular. Not, not as interesting. Uh, yeah. Verzik's got to be an S-tier fight, especially with those tornadoes at the end. There's a lot of skill involved in not losing ticks. Yeah. And it'd be higher than Nilocus. Oh, hold on. There we go. Uh, I'll figure out the order on this as well. Um, okay. Moving on to the hard mode variants. Hard mode Maiden. What's different? So, um, those blood spawns she summons when someone steps in blood, um, those are invincible now. Um, so you're really encouraged to, like, freeze them in place. Uh, but if your team's good, you can just avoid them with proper movement. Um, the crabs that go into Maiden, if you miss a freeze or they go in from the stack, whatever happens, no matter what health they're at, um, Maiden will attack a tick faster for each crab that goes in. And this is interesting because... I don't know. It doesn't really make it more skilled. It just punishes you harder if you mess up. Um, which is okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, it encourages kind of boring play. Like in a trio, you now need two mages. You can't MG anymore. Can't really stack because it'll kill you. Um, you can still skip at the end of the fight uh, if you do DPS. It's just a little more dangerous. It's a more dangerous fight in general, and you have to play a little safer. That's about how hard mode main goes. I think Maiden is... Is Hard Mode Maiden better or worse? I think it's about on par. It's about the same. It's just more punishing, and it lets you do less fun uh, skill-involved technology to make the fight go faster. So... But these will be next to each other whenever I sort that. Uh, bloat is... In Hard Mode. What's interesting? Um... He turns more often, more randomly. He runs more often, more randomly. Uh, he's dropping meat even when you go when he goes down. Um, and he has more health. Well, that's like the least changed boss probably in hard mode. Um, is it more or less interesting? I think less interesting because um, those tickets you could do with the stomps are now random, whether you get hard punished or not by a bloat. Because he can just now just turn whenever he wants, and he can just turn right into you as soon as you drop specs. I don't like that. I think he's a worse fight. He's still A tier. It's still bloat, but I think it's less interesting. Uh, I'll put him in here for now. Um, hard mode Nylos. Okay. How does this work? What's changed? It drops a mini boss at certain points in the waves. There's three of them. Um, it's the same as Vasilius. It just hits less hard and has less health. Um, so basically, it just encourages you to turn around while doing the wave and then, like, spec it down and then go back to doing what you were doing. There's a little skill involved in, like, who does what while that happens. That's kind of interesting. Um, 
And now you cannot barrage or chin like clumps of enemies because if you hit the wrong style Nilocus, it damages you. Uh, it reflects like 10 damage back at you. Uh, you can suicide um, Ice Barrage if your pillars are looking bad, which is kind of interesting. You're like sacrificing health for survival, which is weird, but it's cool. Um... I think this makes it a little less skilled, because a lot of the skill was chinning and barraging things, and you kind of lose that. Oh, and then the boss. Uh, the boss is... I do not like the boss. I don't like the hard mode boss. It's the definition of getting punished for whatever your teammates do. Um... Uh, okay, so how's it work? Uh, the magic attack on Vasilius now, if you are clump together will only hit the one person that's targeting. If you're spread out, it will hit you all. Um, the ranged attack as well. If you're, It's the opposite. If you're together, it will hit you all. Uh, if you spread out, it only hits one of you. So it's like constantly doing this dance. You're moving around and back and forth between uh, the boss and... Uh, I mean, that's kind of cool. It makes it really, really hard not to lose ticks, which definitely increases the skill required. Um, but I do not like... <sighs> I don't like that the boss moves. I wish it was would stay still. Uh, when it's in melee form, if a teammate is far away, it gets dragged up, and it makes it really, really hard to be smart about where you're moving. Um, it's better in ways and worse in ways than regular Vasilius, I think. Um, it's still S tier. Is it worse than regular Nilos? Mm. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's less interesting. Um, it's still good. Really good content. Uh, I think it's a step down, though. Um, I wish they pushed this more, like, making sure you get clumps of enemies and scything things as the melee and, you know, that kind of thing. More encouraging that than um, punishing you for making mistakes like everything else in hard mode does. Um... All right, hard mode soda seg. What has changed? Uh, okay, on his um, with his death orbs, they now he now shoots um, two of them. So you need to step into this pattern to split it amongst your teammates, um, where the person taking the orbs is in the middle, and the other people are on the left and right side of you to you split those. Or the people taking the orbs are on the left and right, and then the rest of the team's in the middle. Um. It doesn't add a whole lot. Like, it encourages you to get orb skips by starting the next phase as he attacks, so it encourages waiting. You don't have to wait. You can tick eat everything still. Um, and then for the mazes, you run chunks of the maze for each person, so all but one person gets picked, and the person on top has to run what the other three people run. So you get a third of the maze each, and then you take turns running it through the whole maze. That's interesting on paper, but it um, it doesn't add a whole lot. It's kind of the same. Um, I don't know. Hard mode Soda Seg. Again, like, he'd be right next to the regular Soda Seg. And not a lot more interesting. I don't know if he's better or worse. They're probably about equal. Okay, hard mode Zarpus is a joke. Uh, I can't believe they put him in the game like this. Uh, hard mode Zarpus is easier than regular Zarpus, which is stupid. No hard mode boss should be easier than the normal one. Uh, why is he easier? He has less defense. He's the only boss in top hard mode that has less defense for no reason. Um, I like lower defense. That's good. But they didn't make him like do more damage or anything. He just is the same fight. The outer area of the snot uh, is filled in as the fight starts, which isn't any harder. You're still going to kill him in the same time. You don't need those tiles. Um, and then when the phase changes, what you're doing is he just turns the last person that hit him. So all you do is have one person click first, and then the other three people click, and then you AFK. What were they thinking with this? Genuinely, I don't know. I'd be happy with them changing this boss, but yeah, that's that's a stupid fight. Um, yeah, Zarpus, hard mode. 
He drops a tier, man. I, I don't know what they were thinking with this. He's in high B tier. Uh, Hard Mode Zarpus is dumb. He's dumb. Okay. Hard Mode Verzik. Um... So what's changed? Uh, P1, she drops rocks from the ceiling uh, around the pillar. Barely changes the fight. Um, you have to alternate pillars now instead of just going behind one. Um, so that's not too interesting. P2 is a little different because the poison... Uh, the bombs that you're avoiding drop poison that lasts a little bit on the ground. So you have to walk in a unique pattern to avoid that. Um... The only other thing that really changed is the red crabs, um, their heal. If you're standing in between them, uh, it will damage you, so you have to avoid that. That's really jank. I don't like that mechanic at all. Um, P3 is the most changed. Um, until webs are the same, the, the tick bombs are the same. Um, yellow tiles is a little different. You have three tiles for each person now, and you have to go to each one. That's really hard to avoid um, with NATO's out. Um, and then the other thing that's changed is the bomb. Um, now you can't tank it. You can't just take it uh, if you have full health. You'll die. Uh, you have to bounce it between your teammates to reduce the damage it does. Which is interesting. There's a lot of cool ways you can deal with that. Um, also, after she hits um, sub 5% health, I think it is, she will uh, heal for a big chunk of her health and Nato's will continue. Which is tough, because Nato's is like the hardest part of the fight. Uh, Verzik is a huge step up in hard mode. It's a lot harder. And there's, it's a lot more interesting. Uh, I love like Addy's video on his pog tank strategy to avoid the green ball. That's very, very cool. Um, it actually encourages you to do things like pog tank and that kind of thing to avoid damage. Um... It just does a step up. It's a step up from the regular version. A little harder, a little more supply drain. Um, need more DPS. If you don't do DPS, you're going to die. If your teammates die, you're going to die. Yeah. It's more punishing. It's a step up. This is one of the best changed fights, I would say. Uh, put it in here for now. It's above Verzik. So I'll just do that so I can remember I'm going to do that. Uh, okay. Theater as a whole. Also S tier content. Theater of Blood is amazing content. Um, every room requires skill and allows you to do harder strats that are chancier. They put you at lower health, but will make you go faster, which is great. This is something they need to focus on more in the future. And I hope they keep that idea with raids. Things I don't like about Tob are having to reduce things defense, um, which is almost every room. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's like the main problem. Uh, just reducing defense sucks. Um, it's above CMs. Yeah, it's gonna go right below Jed. Right here. Yeah. Tob is great. I love it. I really like Tob. Uh, this is my little placeholder for hard mode, Tob, since I don't have a nice little graphic like with challenge mode. Um, Tob hard mode. Is it even better? It takes longer. Forces you to play safer. There are ways of going fast in hard mode, but a lot of them are less interesting than normal, I would say. I think for the most part, it's a step down. Yeah, I will put it right below Tob. Almost every boss is a step down or the same. Uh, and it's kind of... Kind of sad, the way they made it. Um, I was hoping for more mechanical changes. Uh, less... They still didn't, like, raise things stats, which is good, but I, I still would have preferred mechanics that, like, push you to do things that are harder, to do more damage and that kind of thing, which they kind of missed out on. So I'll put that all right here. All right, let's figure out the order. S tier. Sucks at the very, very top. Tippy, tippy top. He'd be up here if he could be. Tob, yep. Hard mode. I think Chad. Is Fight Caves more interesting than Ulm? Yes. Um, is Challenge Mode more interesting than Ulm? <laughs> I'm just leaving those there. That's kind of arbitrary. Um, 
Verzik's a step up. Is Verzik better than... I think right above Ulm is where hard mode Verzik goes. Um, now, nah, you know what? I'm going to put her right above Jad. And I think regular Verzik is still above Ulm. Uh, Nyla Room. Regular's better. Right below Ohm. And hard mode's a step down. I don't know. I guess CM's in between. It's really arbitrary. Uh, like a, a raid as a whole versus a boss. Like who can say? But, you know, something like this probably. A tier. It's at the top. Um... Next is better than Nightmare. Just looking at that. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Mm, is Sep at the top of A tier? I don't think so. I think Gauntlet's... I think Gauntlet should go at the top of A tier. That's funny. That's the same as the pet spot. Um, I think Sep is right below Nex. It's not a boss encounter, so it's kind of arbitrary as well. Uh, Fasanis, Bandos, Cox. Uh, okay, some of these top bosses are better than Cox as a whole. Uh, Bloat is. Maiden's the best of these. Uh, Hard Mode Maiden's just a step down, just a little bit. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Is Soda Tech better than Bloat? Yes. Yes, he is. Is Zarpus better than Soda Tech? Hmm. I'm gonna put him there. I could be I could be torn either way, I think, but regular Zarpus is interesting. Soda Tech is barely a step down from regular Soda Tech. Um I think hard mode bloat's just barely a step down from regular bloat. Is it a step down? Step up probably. I don't know. Not a whole lot going on with Hard Mud Bloat. It's just a little harder. And Cox, where would he land? Entire rate of Cox versus... I think right above Zerpus is where I like Cox to go. Okay, B tier. That's going to be fun. Um, what is not good? Oh, this is hard. Okay, Zalcano's like towards the bottom, probably. Temporos too. Um, Zalra's interesting. Dawn's below Zalra. DK's, I feel like, is at the top, actually. Krill's a step above Zalra, I think. Let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Also here. Vorkath. Vanguards. Vanguards above Vorkath and Vorkath. Hard Mud Zarpa socks. Uh Okay, I think. Tecton. Volcano. Temporos Zarpus. I think that's it. Yep. Yep, looks good. Okay. Uh, top of C tier. Um, Kree is towards the top. I think Kree is top. Kree is top of C tier. Uh, and then probably Mole. Uh, Barrow's right below Mole, yeah. Uh, Zillion's boring. Spila's boring. Serb is boring. I think Serb is mechanically more going on than most of these. Hydra does too. Sire is really simple. Chaos Ellie is really simple. Seracnus is really simple. Okay, I think Vespula right above Chaos Ellie right here. 
Ah, I'll put it above Sire. There's at least something going on. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, I know for sure Mudda is the worst boss in the game. Um, I think Wildy Boss is probably next. Mimic Corp. Okay, these guys are really bad too. Winter Tot's really bad. It's almost not a boss. Might as well not be, but the game considers it one. Uh, Thermi is bad. Oh man. Okay, um, bosses with even a mechanic are better than these, right? So it's got to be below these. I think Kraken is worse than Thermi, because Thermi you can, like, redemption. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Obor has mechanics happening, but they're really simple and boring. I guess above... i go right next to, like, Archaeologist, probably. Uh, Skatizo sucks mechanically, but there are mechanics. Scorpia has a mechanic that's really boring. Okay, Scorpia. KBD poisons you, does a lot of damage. But there's no skill involved, just click the boss. I think anything with a mechanic has to go over KBD. It does have those mechanics, you just avoid them all by killing it so fast. Okay, I think... Yeah, Mimic. And that's Katizo below that, at the top. Ooh, Hespori. Now, Hespori's at least somewhat interesting in a speedrun. That's gotta be the top. Yeah, there we go. Okay. KQ, I hate. It's not like the lowest, though. There's still some... There's some skill to it. Big corpse above KQ. Mm. Yeah, I guess. That's hard. Okay, and then this order. Okay, bada bing, bada boom. And the worst of all is mud. Yeah, I think that's it. A little better balance than my pets video, I would say. Uh, lots of F tier bosses, surprisingly. Uh, but lots of S tier content and lots of A tier content, so you gotta balance. All right, well, that's the end. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks, guys.